Hi, my name is Uchidi. This channel is all about fun art challenges. For today's challenge, I will be developing my icon character, which I also happen to use a lot for my website. I initially drew this one super quickly, so I wanted to improve it to update my icon on YouTube. Since it's a little hard to see on YouTube, here is the icon I'm talking about. It's in chibi style and may be based on a certain person. Just looking at this is kind of embarrassing and there is a ton to improve on, so I'm excited to redraw and develop this character. But just redrawing it wouldn't be that much of an improvement, so I'm going to incorporate three characteristics into the icon. The first one is Loves Kitties. This one is obviously taken from the original picture. The second one is Loves Art and Drawing. Since it's an art channel, I definitely want to do something related to this. The last one is Loves Japanese Culture. I somehow want to incorporate this element into it since I'm influenced by Japanese culture, crafts, and of course anime a lot for this challenge. So let's make this list a little smaller and then get started. Because I'm using Clip Studio to draw this, I want to use one of my favorite features, which is their 3D body image to assist with the drawing. As you can see, the pose is customizable as well as the angle and perspective, so it's super useful if you need help with the proportions like I do. So let's delete that and start fresh. For the pose, I want to do something simple, but that will allow the character to hold maybe a pencil or a pen. So I'll just re-angle the arms a bit and then get started with outlining the figure. I am definitely still a beginner at using the software, but usually I just use a mechanical pencil brush when drawing the initial sketch of the piece. I'm really just making a basic outline and not worrying at all about the smooth lines or the shape of the hands. Since it's a chibi character, I just want to make sure the body proportion is good enough before getting into the details. Now that the basics are in, I'm drawing in the same hairstyle so the character is recognizable and then I move on to the clothes. Since Love's Japanese culture is one of the conditions, I wanted to draw the character wearing the kimono-ish outfit at least halfway. I think one of the most prominent features would be the sleeves so I'll definitely include this. And for the bottom portion, I think I'm going to go with a simple skirt with frills. Frills are always cute. For the shoes, I decided to go with boots. At this time, I thought it would be a better balance with the overall outfit, so I just made a quick idea of what they would look like. To represent the Love's Kitty characteristic, I wanted to draw some type of Maneki Nickel Kitty charm. I thought it might be cute to have it hanging from her obi or middle belt part, kind of like those super old huge cell phone straps. In addition to the strap, I also gave her a cat smile to make sure everyone knows she definitely loves cats. To add the Love's Art and Drawing condition, I struggled a bit with this one, but decided to give her a beret and a pen. A super classic image of an artist, right? Though at this time the hat and hands look pretty weird, but this will be the basic sketch of the character. It's definitely already looking better than the original. After the basic sketch, I always go in and refine at least one time before outlining the piece. From the previous version, I already knew the eyes should be a little bit bigger, so I adjusted that, which is so much easier to do digitally. Usually, I attempt to clean up the hands with the second sketch, but as usual, I was struggling with drawing the right hand with a pen. I thought it would be easier, but a hand is a hand and definitely a super weak point for me. After a little more adding in details, I hide the original sketch to get a better idea of what I have. It's not too bad, but the left eye needs some work, so I made it a little bit bigger and wider, in addition to moving it just a tad bit to the left. The fact that you can do this digitally makes adjusting it a lot easier. Though I wish I could get it right without having to worry about this. So with the basic sketch cleaned up, finally time to start inking. For inking, I always use the real G pen brush since it tends to be the easiest to control in getting the type of lines I'm aiming for. To be honest, there isn't too much to say about the outline portion, so here's a quick run through of the process. With the base layer hidden, we can see the final outline, which I'll spend a bit of time cleaning up the gaps. One thing I love about Clip Studio is the erase tool, which will only erase until the overlapping lines. This is like a huge deal for me, since my hands are pretty much unsteady, which makes the lines super messy. 
In addition to cleaning up the lines, I also adjust the line widths in a few places where the lines look a little too thick or thin. I've learned from other drawings that the line art really helps when coloring in the piece overall, so I wanted to make it as clean as possible before getting into the coloring portion. And with the line art down, let's get the colors we'll be using ready. I'm going to take the hair color and skin color from the original one and then use the color scheme from my website, which is already loaded in the color set box. To get started with coloring, I also do a base layer of each color first. I recently learned about the paint unfilled area and enclose and fill coloring tools. They aren't that effective if your lines aren't completely closed or if you don't color the whole area. So in those cases, I manually outline the area and then fill them like normal or go back and look for the incomplete lines. I had a good idea for the colors of everything but the shoes. So I played with the color a bit until I found something I thought went okay with the outfit. And with the base layers done, just a few adjustments are needed until I start with the shading. I think for almost all of my digital pieces until now, I favored airbrush shading. More recently, I've been using the blur and blend tools to lighten the transition, but one thing I can say for sure is, I still have a lot to learn when it comes to adding shadows to drawings. Skipping ahead, when I was pretty much done, I started to get bothered by the hat, thinking something seemed off, like the shape of her head. So to fix this, I hid all the layers to redraw the lines to make it look a little bit better, and then go back and recolor the parts that were affected. Similarly, I thought the kimono seemed a bit off, so I adjusted it to make it closer to an actual kimono. This is definitely an option I wouldn't have if I did this traditionally. What would require a full redraw only took like 15 minutes to fix. And after the touch-ups, we have the completed piece. Compared to the original, it's definitely a huge improvement. But I feel like if I knew the software better, I could have done it so much faster. Thanks to the 3D model, I was able to get the proportions much better than drawing from scratch. So that's a huge plus. As far as the clothes, I think they came out super cute. It's something that reminds me of what idol groups would wear, like AKB48 or something. So I'm not really sure if it matches the character, but it's still super cute. Though, if I could improve on anything, I definitely think it would be the shading. I think I need to start trying a shading technique outside of the airbrush. And especially for something like this, it would have been probably a lot better. But overall, I'm happy with how it turned out and can't wait to update my icon image. This challenge was fun because it was kind of like a redraw at the same time as trying something new. Because I drew the original kind of quickly, I wanted to get an updated version of the character and thought recording it would be a great opportunity, especially since I do more fan art than original characters. Giving conditions I had to follow made it kind of tough to incorporate everything, but I think it was good to force out some creativity. And if you have any ideas on how I could have done this differently, please share. I would love to try out some different styles as well, based on what is recommended in the comments. So if you liked the video, please like or leave a comment below. And of course, I will be super happy if you hit the subscribe button. See you next time.